I once told my team members, I've been programming for 15 years and I know two kind of programmers, those who love regex and those who hate it. Uh, folks in the first group reach for regex to solve anything, for not, not anything, but anything remotely solvable with regex, they reach for regex. And folks in the second camp will literally write twice the amount of code, import a ton of dependencies, do anything they can to just avoid descending the pits of writing regex. And it's so polarized, I'm not even kidding that it's the only subject that I teach where I have to first apologize to the class. And, and no other subject, right? Uh, trigonometry, algebra, programming, none. So when you come to me with a problem and I suggest regex as a solution that proceed to help you with the code, um, I make sure that I apologize and give you fair warning, a disclaimer if you if you may, uh, before proceeding to write the code for you. So the other day, one of my teammates told me if I'm short on content ideas for this channel, I don't know what to put up anymore. Uh, he, she, she mentioned, what if you just teach regex on the channel? And I'm pretty sure it was a joke, a subject so boring, so tedious, it's completely unmonetizable. No one is ever going to watch it. Um, but then I thought about it a little bit more. And on a subject so boring, I could make it work if the content uh, are short enough, something like 15 minutes long, I guess. I'll probably make a playlist of that in the future where we go through 15 minutes tips on working with regex in Python. And hopefully each video, you pick up some tips and tricks to bring it into your regex workflow. It's not going to be a, a whole uh, regex from scratch kind of beginner tutorial. It's going to be like, here's a tip you can use. Uh, here's a practical advice you can use. And this is something you can bring to your regex uh, workflow. So today is regex tip number one. Um, and I, I guess that's probably going to be the title of this video. And it's about taking long regex expression and breaking that down into more digestible and less confusing form. And there is a reason why this is tip number one, and it's because any regex that is too complex quickly become unmaintainable. So uh, actually, let me just show you some examples. I have that on my screen, um, so I might as well just show you some examples. So I did a quick search here. What is the longest regular expression you have seen? And um, this one, the regular expression to validate email addresses, possibly multiple in two CC, BCC, and this is what uh, that person wrote. Um, and, and also, the, the, they encountered far too many sites that do not accept my email address plus your stupid site at gmail.com as a valid email address, and there's so many of them. Just look at this monstrosity. And there are a few clarification here that this is not so complex to validate a single email address. It just needs to, it needs this complexity to validate addresses blocks in a destination part of the email header. Um, and so this is another one, a, com a, a correct email address validation regex. Uh, 6,343 characters just to validate a stupid email address. And you can scroll down and down and just take a look at that, right? This one, uh, I once wrote one. So, so there are a few of them and you can just go and look at some of these horrible uh, regex. But... There is a reason why I want to put this as tip number one. How do you take very complex regex? And I don't, I'm not going to show you like a very re complex one, but I want to just show you the main tip, the main technique. And you can think, if you know how to use it, you would generalize to maybe more complex ones. So how do you make complex uh, uh, sort of regex less complex? By breaking them down into different lines and then commenting them and stuff. I want to just maybe talk about that. So helping you bring some empathy to the table. And a simple tip here, but if you force yourself to start writing regex this way, um, it will be life-changing and your co-workers will finally ask you to join them for lunch. Okay, that's a guarantee. That's a promise. So let's take a look at this site. Um, I have it here, lazada.sg. Lazada, if you don't know what Lazada is, if maybe you don't live in Asia or Southeast Asia, uh, this is an e-commerce site. This is one of the largest in Asia. Um, it's one of the largest in Indonesia, in Singapore, in Thailand, in all these different places. Okay, uh, and I live in Southeast Asia. And this is the site of a wine and alcohol seller. So um, there are plenty. This is not very different from eBay, I would I would think. Um, there are all, all kind of different categories. So not very different from eBay if you're from the from the US and you're more uh, uh, familiar with that. So you could take a look at the all the different subcategories. Um, and we do a lot of work for e-commerce and a lot of the uh, our clients they are from somewhat similar domains. Um, not not all of them. We also work in industrial clients and stuff, uh, manufacturing. Uh, uh, mining, we do a lot of those things. But if you take a look at this one, this is e-commerce. Um, so there are a few categories here. But I just want to maybe take a look at one of them. And one of the very common requests that we get all the time is like, how do I automate my e-commerce operation? I want to look at what is the best, uh, uh, what is the most optimal price point for this particular product? When do we get, what kind of reviews, what kind of comments we get, what kind of Q&A we get, people who ask questions, what kind of questions do they ask? And how do they compare? Um, so there are some of these products, right? They're, you're not going to be the only one that sells that product. They're, you're going to be a ton of other players uh, who sells that product. So if I take a look at health and beauty, there's like men's care, beauty tools, and let's say sexual wellness. So let's click on one of them. There's like condoms, lubricants. So, so actually, let's pick a, a different one. I don't want to, I, I want to monetize the, the site. I don't want to, uh, let's take a look at something like shampoo. So if you look at facial moisturizers, you're not going to be the only guy selling facial moisturizers. Even if you click into it, you're not going to be the only guy that, um, 
oh, it did, I detected uh, uh, unnatural traffic. I don't know why that is. Maybe I was doing some scraping. But anyway, so you're not going to be the only one with that product, right? So there are a lot of other sellers gonna it's gonna sell exactly the same brand, exactly the same SKU it's called, right? Exactly the same size, the same brand, the same whatever, expiry date, whatever, right? What have you. And how do you compete against how do you stand out against that? So you, if you wanna think about this um from a from a operational point of view, how do you know that your price is competitive enough that if people search for this particular brand that you show up and people actually buy uh, from you and not from somebody else who sell exactly the same product and how often does your competitors who sell exactly the same product how often do they do discounts and 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 such all right so let's go back to the one here this is three creators and three creators is a, a, a wine and wine and uh, alcohol seller uh, they're based in singapore but let's take a look at one of the product i'm gonna take a look at let's say this one so this is 198 and there are six reviews that's good enough click onto it so it's taking a while to load but now that I have it here, so just like just like on eBay, just like on Amazon, you would expect to see some ratings. You expect review. Uh, how how do they review this product? How do they what do they say about the product? Right. So if you click on that, it brings you to the review section. It does tend to load really slowly. So I'm just gonna give it a while. But I also had a backup. If this doesn't work, is that I'm gonna actually have this site uh, uh downloaded already. So I actually have it locally, and I I'll probably run through that. Um, but let's let's wait for a bit more to see if it actually runs okay but one of the, one of the things you could think about automating is you look at the store you look at things like 96 percent celebrating ship on time chat response how often do they chat and even that is something you can you can uh, sort of automate you can look at what when they chat with you what do they ask is it about logistics questions you know where do they where do you ship how often do you ship um how soon can you ship and when can i expect delivery or they ask questions like do i have to pay a delivery fee or are you gonna have that covered for me they're gonna ask questions like that so you're gonna have a lot of like faq and you can maybe uh, think about from a data science po point of view how can you take that information and improve your communication and increase sales right people could look for those questions even before bothering your uh, customer support team and you can look at the ratings here you see a few ratings that delivered as uh, advertised very well packed packed securely this is all in singapore i believe this is based in singapore lazada.singapore so um you, you would you would expect that uh you know you may see some uh singlish uh singapore the singapore variants so the singaporeans are really proud of their of their variants of english so they call it it's called singlish so um so you see a few reviews like that so how do you scrape that and how do you uh, uh write regex to find this particular section so this this is what i'm going to talk about all right there's a lot of approach here the first one is to use beautiful soap and i covered that in my other videos if you want to learn about price scraping collecting the price from a massive e-commerce you want to look at for example you want to take all of this and turn them into a csv data so you can do that for your competitor you can do that for any other companies so uh, say you have four other competitors in the market you want to basically get a csv containing the SKU, the product name, and the price, uh, and all, all sorts of information. You can uh, you can either hire us to do it at SuperType. Uh, we do that a lot. We could maybe work it out for you. Um, you can hire us to do it, or you can just watch my video on how to do it, and you can go and learn how to do it yourself. All right, so I'm going to leave that choice to you. Um, but anyway, coming back to this, right? So how would you go ahead and do this? So I've shown you how to do it in Beautiful Soap. Today, I'm going to talk about regex. So I'm going to use the regex method to, to, to doing it. All right. So I'm going to have my um, terminal open up and I'm going to start from there. So let me resize the windows a little bit and I'll come back. So I'm going to move my um, move into the desktop. So in on my desktop, I have a couple of things. But one of the things I have is the... Uh, it is basically a copy of what I just showed you, right? So I have that in this soap.html. I'm just gonna maybe do a quick bat and do a, I know this is gonna be a lot. I'm gonna clear my screen later, but this is how it looks like, all right? So there's a description, there's a Suntory Yamazaki whiskey. This is exactly uh, what you see on the website, right? And I just took a copy of that. And if you don't know where you get that from, you could either um, uh, look at my other videos where I talk about Selenium and using Selenium, you could go and fetch a copy of that website. Um, but that, that is kind of a, that is not about, nothing to do with regex. So I don't really want to dive into that. Uh, but anyway, you could also try to just right click and look at page source and you should see something very similar. So you have a doc type, you have a you know, description. This is nose rich and weighty with heady and smoky uh, aromatics. But right now I'm looking at Suntory. So you will not see the same thing. You want to look at Suntory. So um, you're going to have to find that. Suntory, that's 12. So I guess that's the one. Um, I guess we could try and right click on that and it would open that up 
And if you look at the source now, so the Centauri Craft Specialty Beer. So this is beer, but this is Yamazaki Whiskey. Anyway, all right? So you, you know what I mean. You can find it. You can either use Selenium. You can learn Selenium. You can learn web automation from my other videos. I'll put all those links in my description in the video description and just click onto them and go and learn them if you really want to learn about web scraping and stuff this is not the video for it this is the video for regex and i want to stay on point there and anyway so we have this uh, i'm going to clear my screen now not important um but we know you have uh, soap.html so the first thing we want to do is want to make sure we install the right packages i'm going to just go into my flask uh virtual environment you could do a activate source activate you could if you use um uh, virtual environment, you could just activate that. If you use something like uh, Conda, you could do a Conda activate. Uh, I don't use Conda, so I don't have that. And then what you want to do next is to, in you only need one, actually you don't even need this dependency, but just to save you some time and just to make it really quick because this is a soap.html, I could use beautiful soap for that. But honestly, if you're trying to build up a machine learning pipeline and this is the only reason you're using it, you could maybe discard that as a dependency later on. But I'm just going to save you some time. So if you just do a quick beautiful soap um, install pip and just click on the first link, you could just see here's the pip install beautiful soap. So all you need to do is to just install that first. And like I said, this is again, not really a video on that. So here it says it's already satisfied. So it's, you know, it's not going to do anything. All right, that's cool. Let's clean that up. And I'm going to just maybe open the Python right away. And I'm going to just start from here. Okay. And I'm just going to talk about the main concept. And I guess later on we can, uh, actually we could maybe just do this. Like open up a new terminal as well, a split terminal, and I can just run this code. All right. So I guess you could start from maybe just import regex because we're going to talk about regex. So might as well do that. We also just did the installation. So what's the point of installing if we're not going to use it? So let's do that. So from BS4. And we're going to say import beautiful soap, right? So beautiful soap. And there you go. So you have import uh, RE. I tend, I tend to put all the standard libraries, um, all the standard Python libraries at the top first, import them first, and then um, I, I do the, the ones next. So from BS4, import beautiful soap. That's not a standard library. That's a third party external dependency. So I have to bring them later. Um, so i uh, do the import RE first. And then what next? For, for now, I, I just want to maybe take the HTML that I showed you earlier, I want to just bring that in. All right. So remember, I have the uh, soap.html, right? So I'm going to just go ahead and say we've open using a file manager. And I want to open that soap.html. So all I need to do is to pass in a file name. I'm, it's not in any other directory. It's not even in a, you know, a subdirectory or anything. It's just right in there in the same directory where I open this up. So I'm just going to say HTML. And how do I open this? I want to open this in read mode, read binary. So RB. R stands for read, B stands for binary. So I'm going to say with that and then just give it a, a name called file. You can call it file, you can call it F. I'm just going to call it F. So, so this is going to open that for me and F is that context manager. I could um, I could now just say F.read for example. All right. And I'm going to say soap and I'm going to just use beautiful soap to read that in. So I'm going to say beautiful soap. All right. And this is where you want to bring that in, right? So I'm going to just say F.read and Generally, usually this is good enough. And some of you would say, well, what if it's not a HTML? You want to read it in, let's say, uh, XML and stuff, you can. Uh, you pass in a features option, so like features. So that's a second parameter you can pass. But for me, this is a HTML parser. There's no other reason to do anything else. I could just pass in a HTML parser. And I believe this is the default as well. So if you omit these features, if you did not use the features um, argument here, the default would be HTML parser. So you could even you know, save some time and not even write that out. Uh, but let's just be explicit. I like to be explicit and clear because sometimes in be with beautiful soup, I use different kind of passes, sometimes XML, sometimes some other passes. So let's keep it right there. Okay. And now with this, I could just go ahead and print a soap just to see what it looks like. Okay. Bam. I have the whole thing, right? The whole thing from, and there's a lot of scripts here and stuff. Um, where do I find the reviews itself? Where do I find the reviews? Where are all the reviews coming from? Now the reviews itself are in a very specific section in the script. They use the script and they use some server-side loading to server-side rendering to take that and then load that onto the right pages, uh, the, the right sections. So if you look at, uh, I'm going to find it for you. So you look at the customer name, right? That's Priscilla. Uh, the question is, hi seller, does this border come with a box? And then there's a question time. The question was asked on the 8th of November, 2018. The seller name was three credits, no problem. And we will see that uh, there is also things like question time and how soon is the response. Um, 
There's another question. Uh, may I know how come the box is in black and not the light brown one? And this is the customer name is Kim K. And you see the questions and answers in here, and you will also see the reviews in here. So let me find that reviews here. So you see that when you review, people could also uh, say how, how many people find that helpful. So that's also something you can do in data science, in data analytics. You can say what kind of reviews where what, what kind of reviews are, uh, are are generally helpful to more people, right? So people who find that review very helpful, or some people who say, well, that review wasn't very helpful. Um, so that's also good. We know that. And this is kind of the area that I'm looking for. So um, when I see this variable module data, and then there is the data, there's the one there's one key in this uh, sort of object. I, I want to say dictionary, but that's a Python thing. This is kind of, uh, you know, this is not. So anyway, uh, you can see this is a, a an object. You can see it from the curly bracket. And you can see there is only one key in that. It's called data. And if you look into data, there is a ton of things here, including things like chat response value 83%. So immediately you can think about from a data science perspective, you can compare that against the competitors. How fast do they respond in chat? And you see the answer time. So that is the response time. Like if somebody asks a question, how soon or how fast can they expect a response? So how, how proactive are you guys in replying to the customer, right? Reviewer, right? There is the reviewer and there's Kenneth and that's the avatar. That's the can edit. Um, is purchase whether or not that's a, the reviewer have made a purchase whether you can whether Lazada as an e-commerce platform can confirm that it's a it's an actual purchase because if you don't want just people to just review without actually buying anything because then it would bring your ratings down because people are gonna just you know, just destroy your brand basically um, he gave a rating of five and this is the review content he said no complaint good thanks and then there's a review rate ID there's a review time that's 17 December 2019 and this is another one uh, reviewer is now Daphne and uh, she has made a purchase and that's uh, is purchase true rating is five review content yep it's risky all right and uh, she gave you a five star rating as well all right so if I trace back the th there's so much things in here this is crazy there's so much things in here but really what I want is this section right the uh, war module data all right, while well, module data. This is uh, this is what I want to get, and then what I want to do is I want to write a regex that targets everything after that. So I'm just gonna maybe leave this uh, part up here, and I'm just gonna create a new Python script. Uh, in fact, I'm gonna just use Beam for that, and maybe what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, take that and find module, find relevant section, find rel section, rel section. Dot py. So this this certain this particular, uh, I actually have a lot of this kind of web scraping stuff, but in this case, yeah, I'm just going to move the, the subject a little bit. I'm going to talk about how do you find this particular section and then take all of this section, all of these things um, from the raw module data, take all of that and then put them into a nice, something like a nice object where you can query and stuff using regex. All right. So I'm going to use regex to target this string and I'm going to use a look ahead to stop it somewhere because otherwise if i just say match everything any anything it's just going to match all the way to the end and it's going to be too much and it's not what i want so anyway i'm going to go ahead create the wim and i'm going to start from doing the same thing that i've done above i'm going to say import and what am i going to import i'm going to import regex so import re and then i'm going to do the from bs4 and i'm going to say import beautiful so this is exactly what i showed you above um so if you want to scroll up a little bit to see what you wrote you can um, you can use Visual Studio Code for that. I'm just thinking it's like this is going to be a short video anyway and it's not overly complex. So I decided to just maybe click uh, stick to Veeam and uh, something is messing up my Veeam right now. I don't have time to fix it, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that at some point. So we've opened uh, and we earlier we said as file, right? So we're just going to name it the same. You can name it something else if you want. And I'm going to say soap. And what do I have? I have beautiful soap. So beautiful soap. And I want to use the read method. And then I want to basically pass in the features. If not, I could just omit that if I want to, honestly. Not not really important. You could uh, default this there. But I'm just going to be explicit. Good practice anyway. So I'm going to say html.parser. Right. So far, so good. So we've opened. And then I know that in here, in order to see all that, I just basically print the whole soap out like that. But here, I don't want to print the whole soap out because then it wouldn't be using regex, would it? So I don't want a human eye to go and find that. So what we can do is use regex to find a certain pattern. Regex itself is a, uh, it's 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 basically regular expression. It's a way for you to target stuff, find things. And so when you look at regex, you see all of this, you know, crazy um, stuff to find a certain pattern. And Stack Overflow has a lot of this kind of uh, uh, examples. Uh, if you click on the regex uh, tag on Stack Overflow, 
you see a lot of examples on here. So if I have a string like that, how do I extract characters that appear in before? And you will see people giving out, uh, you know, different regex uh, solutions here. So it's a very common uh, sort of uh, thread on, on, on Stack Overflow. And um, you can see some of the, this is not really using, oh, this is because this part is, okay, it's the string extract, all right. So how do we make sense of the pattern and stuff? It's something a little bit outside of the scope of this. I want to keep this to be like 10, 15 minutes. If you really are very curious about learning regex, you want me to do a full three hours kind of course, uh, teaching you regex and doing it, hand holding you one by one, I guess I can, but uh, that depends on my availability at some point. For now, right, let's not go back. Let's not worry about that. Let's get back to um, what we have on a terminal. And then what am I going to do? I want to find this module data section. This is the section I want to find, all right? So this is called find relevant section. So a lot of the things above there are not really relevant to me. They they, they don't matter from an e-commerce operations uh, point of view, all right? So I'm going to go ahead and just write the regex to find that, and I'm going to show you how I would normally do it, right? You will do something like re.findall. Actually, let's make it, uh, let's just say section, because we're trying to find a section after all. Oops. So we said re.findall. And this is what you generally would do. And this is how I generally do it in the past. And I don't do it anymore, but this is how I generally do it. So I would say something like, take that, and I want to find this under, underscore dunder, module data dunder. And I want to make sure that the, the, the in this case here, M and D are both uh, case sensitive. Um, you can switch on and off. So maybe I'll talk about that later. But right now, let's just go ahead and just write module, okay, data. If I do this, okay, and if I do this, and I'm just gonna go ahead and, okay, if I just pass in soap, uh, this is not gonna work, why? Because it's gonna actually complain and say that soap is not a string. So if I were to try and run this, and actually let's even do that, let's just go ahead and just write that without quitting, okay? And I'm gonna open up another terminal on the site, and this is where I have to sort of bring up everything and just bring it up a little bit and Somewhere like that, okay? I'm gonna change that to my desktop so I can run this file. Uh, if I go ahead and say fine, uh, probably don't need that, but fine. Oh, let's just do a work on because it can then import that stuff. So you wanna activate the virtual environment and I'm gonna say Python, uh, find relevant section.py. I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. Um, you see what happens is that it's gonna complain, complain that soap is not a string or bytes like object. So Soap itself is not a string. Well, regex operate on strings, so you this will not work, right? So how do you how do you uh, sort of uh, account for that? So there are a few ways you could do that. One, the, the easiest, uh, I'm using Veeam, so you tap on you you hit W to sort of move or move move uh, to the next word, and then from here you can click on DW, uh, hit DW to sort of delete word, and instead of doing that, right, you could just say take this and then just make it a string. So you do a string of soap sort of like this, right? So string of soap, um, and then I guess that would probably work. So if I just save that, okay, and I go back to my tree, don't worry about the, the pylin and stuff. I didn't install pylin. Um, this is a pretty new sort of setup. I just upgraded my Ubuntu to a 20, uh, I don't know, the latest 22.04 uh, or something, and there's a few configuration on my Linux that I haven't really tinkered with. I basically also upgraded my kernel. Um, so the base kernel is 5.15, that's the uh, Linux kernel, but it's having some issues in my Wi-Fi. So I just upgraded the kernel and this is really not, you know, like the, the base Ubuntu is 5.15. Even if you upgrade the kernel, they would still be within 5.15. So I have to go and download a driver, uh, download the kernel and then uh, point to it and then upgrade uh, that, that this stuff are not entirely working. And when I have time over the weekend, I'll probably go and fix them. But for now, just ignore that, that uh, pile in unexpected output thing really, okay? <laughs> uh, let's let's get back in here, right? So if I go ahead now and I just run the same code up there, um, see what's happened. So nothing happened because we didn't return anything. So let's go back and let's go ahead and just maybe do a print section. So ideally, we want to be able to print the section out. We want to see if the things come back, right? So I'm going to tell you it's not going to work yet, but I'm going to at least give me a chance to explain why it doesn't work, right? So let's run that. And oh, it does work actually, it returns the module data and it returns this item. So what is happening here? Now what is happening is that you're only matching that exact word, right? You're actually matching that exact word. So let me find that uh, by 
variable, variable, create a variable in JavaScript, and then usually nowadays you see like let and cons, but back, I mean, there are still a lot of cases for like using var, right? So var, module data, and you're matching this exact word. You're not matching any word that comes after it. So when you say find all, it's going to find all of that and it's going to return to you um, any occurrences of that. So this is not helpful because you're, you're finding this and then you're returning that. That's not helpful. What you want to do is you want to say, if I find this word, I want to take the ones that follow after it. You want to take anything, all the strings that follow after it. All right. And also, if you want to match any after, after string, you need to sometimes escape some characters. For example, there's a space between this. You want to be careful about that. So I will show you how to do that first and then I'll explain um, the logic behind that all right so i'm gonna go down to this one and and what i would do is that you see that the space between them and then there's an equal and then there's a space again so all of that stuff needs to be escaped right the space needs to be escaped and and so on so forth the equal needs to be escaped so that you know that this is i'm not writing python uh, i'm not writing regex anymore i'm actually uh, escaping into that that special character and then i'm coming back to string all right so let's do that so i'm going to put a backslash uh, space that stands for s stands for sp uh, space so backslash s stands for extra space and i'm going to say um, equal this is the equal sign i want to match so i'm going to say equal and then i'm also going to put an extra space because there's also an extra space now from here on out i want everything else to match now i actually want a curly bracket because from there on you with the curly bracket it's easier later to go from string back into a object or dictionary all right and using the object we can do some sort of like parsing and 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 maybe just finding the exact key and doing that kind of traversing it's easier than that way so i actually want a curly bracket but i do not want any of this so i'm gonna say find all of it right and then match anything that comes after it how do you say match anything that comes after it now you could use just like a wildcard character so you would do something like this and you would say dot and as many times as you want <laughs> all right so you're matching everything that comes after this particular thing so let's go ahead and save it okay and if i get into my okay this time it actually did find something um, you see that it says that there is an invalid syntax. That's actually good. So that's why sometimes, um, you know, despite all that stuff, I put up with it. Um, so what happened is that the the we didn't close the quotation correctly. So I want to take this out, put that back in here, and let's write that. Okay. So long. Let's go back here and let's do a Python. Let's run that. Okay. Now I see if I scroll all the way. Let me actually maybe make the window a little bit larger and. Probably don't need this anymore so i could either hide this out somewhere or maybe just make it a little bit smaller uh but that's kind of it that's that's okay that's that's not that's not the best layout i think but uh it will work so if you go all the way and see what was actually returned to you is that it's gonna find from this point out everything else because you didn't tell it where to stop so you just find all the ratings but it's good because in 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 a way you would also find daphne reviewer you'll find the review time you'll find all of this different stuff right so I guess, um, I guess that works. All right. So if you get back here, now I want to tell it where to stop, right? I want to tell it where to stop because I don't want it to return from here all the way to the end of this file. There's just way too much um, things that are not in the relevant section anymore. And this whole uh, Python uh, script is called find relevant section. So that is obviously not relevant anymore if I just return everything down to the bottom. So I'm going to find where I want to stop. Okay. So I see that there is still a user called uh, anonymous user, but there is an anonymous ID. So I can actually match this user. If this user go out and leave a bunch of bad reviews for every, every item on my site, then I could maybe make a complaint because I can match that. And so that's another use of data science again, right? You see that, okay, if there is an anonymous review targeting your site, just doing very bad reviews on everything that uh, that is on your site, um, you can, even though there is no account associated with that guy, there is still an anonymous ID, all right? So that's really there. And you can still see the default location. And but from here, right, if I trace it all the way up to this point, from there on out, like is life up or login, login URL, all of this stuff are no longer useful. So all of this have nothing to do with my relevant section anymore. They're not relevant. They are still important information. I would save them. Some part of uh, some other members of my team will maybe work on that. Um, but for me, uh, anything up to this point, uh, you know, that there's no more value to me. For, for this particular analysis. So what would I do here is that I could do a look ahead and I said, okay, you can match anything you want, but only match up to the point of is life up. So I want to end at post code. And that's kind of where I want to end. I don't want to see anything uh, beyond that. So I would maybe just go ahead and just add another uh, uh, look ahead. This is called. So there is a look back. There's a look ahead. Look ahead. Find for the keyword is life up. 
Okay, this is not a very complex regex. This is actually a relatively simple regex, but just to demonstrate the purpose is good enough. And I'm just going to go ahead and write and save it again. And I'm going to go into my panel tree. I'm going to clear everything out and then watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to run it again, but this time I expect the final, the the the, the uh, last few, if I'm just going to eyeball the last few strings there in my in my paragraph, I expect to see maybe up to post the code. So let's do that. And what do I have here? I have up to is post code, post the code. And that's great. That's great. That's exactly what I want. And it ends here as a square bracket and you say there is no square bracket here. Well, the, the reason for that is because when you return a find all, it's going to find all of them and it's going to return an, an array. Okay, a list if you will. So you want to just take the first item. Uh, or If you don't want to do that, you don't have to use find all, just use the find. All right, just use the find instead of the find all. Um, I'm using find all for a very specific reason that I don't want to get into here. I just want to focus on the regex side of things. But that is kind of how you do it. And now anyone could just run your script. This is a very simple script. And anyone could run this script and they would be able to get exactly the section from a massive long wall of text. Look at that. That's a long wall of information. Look at that. I'm just keep scrolling and you just keep going up. There's just so much information, so much, right? And we don't have to do that now. We just have to look for the specific section that contains all the reviews. And I'm going to just send this to my, uh, put this script down into the pipeline and my guys, my team members, they could use this script and they could only work with this small section that has all the reviews that I need to uh, work with. And that's great. So let's go back to this uh, section and let's now, now let's, this is simple regex. Uh, a lot of you will not find this particularly interesting. So where is exactly is the first tip? So the first tip is now that we know this works, how do we improve this, right? How do we improve this? So how can we write this regex better? If this is somebody new on a team trying to work with you, how would this person understand this better? So my tip is to break down this into multiple lines and then uh, I'll show you what I mean by that. All right. So I'm just going to comment that out first. So tip number one, um, I'm going to go, in, in here and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to say section, same thing. I'm going to say re review, find all and this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to open a few lines because here instead of writing the whole thing out there like, like the earlier one, I'm actually going to just do a uh, multi-line okay and if you if you're feeling like uh, you want to do this in Visual Studio Code, you may have a sort of a different layout. I'm using Wim right now, but I will do a multi-line and in the multi-line, this is, I'm going to still write exactly the same thing anyway. So um, if you see that there's the module data and stuff like that, we still have the same thing. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, do the module data and underscore um, and then space equal sign and then space. Okay, so far this is good. Then I would now add a comment to maybe explain what that is. I would say first match module data section from so um, and that is kind of what I'm just doing, you know, the first line, nothing fancy. And then what I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and comment out uh, at the second part of the matching, which is match as many things as you want. Um, so match everything after, right? Match, oops, match everything after, right? So after you find that module data section, after you find a module data space equals space, match everything after. So I'm going to maybe I just add a comment here. So anyone who is looking at my code now will have some sort of idea about how do I take the massive regex and break down. This is not really massive, but just for illustration purposes, for educational purposes. All right. And then I would say something, I like look ahead and I'm say leave life up. But anyone who is not familiar with the look ahead, you know, maybe you could also add a comment and say, this is just look ahead uh, in order to stop, in order to stop. Uh, matching to the end because if you don't add a look ahead this it's gonna find that all right and it's gonna just go ahead and match everything after just gonna match all the way to the end of the line of uh, whatever is in your soap and that's not what we want you want to say match everything in this group group everything in here um, you right before you met right before you encounter is life up so everything up to that point and you could just add a comment just to sort of explain what that is and if there's too much you can just delete the line Okay, and then what I'm going to do as well is I'm going to move um, down here and I'm going to say A, A to append and I'm going to add a comma. So this is the final. Then what do I want to do? I want to basically use a string, but again, I can explain myself. So I'm going to say here, I want to take reg. I, I usually want to match soap, but I'm going to say reg, regex expects, um, uh, what, did, what did they say? Regex expect. I think it's like reg, reg, exp, a string or something. Strings of, of uh, bytes like object. I think that's what it said. 
can even tell you what it says now. So regex expects strings of by like object is what it says. Um, if you're not sure, then just scroll up and see what it says there. So what it tells us to do is to put this in a string. And now this is probably going to be good enough. But because we're doing this regex using this uh, uh, triple quotation, the multi-line, so we also want to add a, another command here to say turn on the regex.x mode. Um, this x mode in regex, um, uh, because we use multi line, because we use a triple triple triple, which is multi line. All right, so just explain that a little bit, and so you just turn on that re dot x. Um, if you take all of them and put them in the same exact line, they are not very different from this, except I just added a comma and then put re dot x, right? Uh, because we use multi line, but because here in one line we don't have that, but basically, this is the same, but now everything is a lot clearer. And they break it down, you know, this is the first thing, then second thing. And you can have as many as you want. You can have like maybe eight lines or nine lines of ten lines. I've done code that, uh, that that goes up to like ten lines, nine lines of different, each one of them in its own thing. But uh, each one of them are properly commented. And anyone who's working with my code now can look at that and it's at least maintainable now. Anyone could look at it and like, oh, okay, this is what it's doing. Oh, this is match matching everything because of that wildcard. Um, so you could command that and make it helpful to anyone who is going to have to, the, the poor soul who have to look at your regex code. All right, let's go ahead and write everything out, save it, go into three, clear the screen, and let's see if all of this still works. Bam, still works. So there you go. So my tip is to take, uh, instead of writing one massive line and having something crazy like, uh, I mean, this is really cool, it's just not helpful. It's cool, it's just not helpful, all right? Um, so let's go back to regex. Like looking at some of these regex here would be so much more maintainable if it's broken down. But you can see some of them gets a little bit too much. Now, if you want some practice, take a look at some of them and then try and just break it down and make that into a habit. And this is the only way I write regex now. I don't give you this thing anymore. I don't just write this whole thing and then just like, okay, I'm gonna copy that and I'm gonna ask you to, okay, this is it. I'm not gonna do that now. I'm just gonna break it down and I'm gonna explain that to you. And that's kind of like tip number one. And I think that if you are gonna work in a team setting or even maybe not just in a team, but just working for, uh, you know, alone, uh, I feel like that's a good habit to get into. So that's tip number one for you in terms of reading regex. And I'm gonna, I don't know if there's a lot of interest in regex, like I said, I could make it a longer, uh, maybe learn regex from scratch kind of thing. But uh, I think there's a lot of videos that cover that already. So I don't know if there's actually even a need for that. But if you wanted to do like short form videos, 15 minutes videos of like, you know, here's another tip for writing regex, uh, I would probably do that. And that's it for, uh, that's all I have time for today. I'm gonna uh, find, talk to you soon and uh, um, take care of each other, bye.